Welcome to Finance in Excel video number 623. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook for Chapter 7 or the PDFs for Chapter 7, click on the link directly below the video and then scroll way down to the Finance Excel section. All right, um, oh, this video, last video we did a constant dividend. So preferred stocks, we knew what the dividend was be and we dividend would be based on the contract and so we uh, developed a model to price or figure out the value of the stock. In this video here, we want to look at the dividend growth model. And here we have the assumption that dividends are expected to grow at a constant percent per period. Now again, this model is not for all stocks, but um, it, it actually uh, does give some uh, good valuations for s companies that have predictable stocks. And in our first video and the next couple ones after that, we talked about how the price right now is the discounted future dividend. So here's uh, dividend one, dividend two, discounted back two periods, dividend three, discounted back three periods, on out into infinity. Now, if you do a little algebra on this, you get this. And actually, you can uh, reduce it down to this. So what this formula says, and this will be our dividend growth model to value stock at time 0, it's the dividend just paid times 1 plus the assumed constant growth rate divided by rate, uh, discount rate minus the growth rate. And guess what? This top part right here, the dividend right now times 1 plus the uh, growth rate, that gives us dividend one period out from now, right? So the model can be reduced down to this. So if you have dividend times 0, then you do this one. If you have dividend at time 1, then you use this one. We will also use this, uh, an extrapolation from this, uh, in a later video. But let's see how this basic dividend growth model works. Let's go over to Excel. We are Our goal is at price uh, times 0 to calculate the price. We know that the dividend just paid is 50 cents. Well, we can easily calculate our next dividend, right? If it's got a growth rate of 2%, I say equals, hey, that times 1 plus. And remember, we've seen this so many times in this class. When you see this 1 plus, or even like in our uh, last chapter, we saw 1 minus. The 1 op always represents the full amount. That's the 50 cents. And the plus or minus represents the uh, proportional change. All right, there's our dividend uh, one period out from now. So to calculate the price now, or estimate, these are all models that are used to estimate. We take that dividend divided by R, big R, minus little g. And so $3.92. If we sell, see the stock selling for less than this, we're going to buy it. If it's more than this, we're not going to buy it. Now, oftentimes, you don't want to waste real estate to do this. So all in one formula, you would say uh, dividend, current dividend times 1 plus our growth rate. That will be the denominator. Sorry, that will be the numerator, the top of the fraction, divided by our, in parentheses, big R, discount rate, minus our constant growth. And then we'll get the same thing. All right, let's go look at another example here. Now this example, oh look, we're already given uh, the um, dividend at time 1. We know what the next dividend is going to be. So it's basically done for us. We take that, the hard part's done. We take that, divide it by r minus g. Now what happens if r was bigger? This uh, no, There's a few assumptions here for this model to work. You know, you, you actually have to have a reliable growth rate, right? Uh, constant pattern of dividends being paid. And uh, R can't be bigger than your growth rate. And we'll see later how to deal with uh, that in some situations. But for this model here, uh, R has to be greater than this. If it wasn't, then this goes to infinity. So there it is. The stock should be $13.33. All right, um, and next video, we'll actually see what happens. We'll graph what happens to this model as R changes and as G changes, and then see what happens to the price. All right, see you next video.